Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at reference labels. So these are the feature that's been added to the new card visual and it allows you to change cards that look like this into cards that look like this. So these cards now have a reference label that has got the, the threshold value and the variance from the threshold value for each of these and you can also conditional format this little bit of extra detail here. Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. So in this video, like I mentioned before, we're going to be going in and we're going to be changing the cards that I've got in this dashboard here that shows Batlog to basically show targets. Okay, so previously you've been able to layer targets on top of card visuals, but it means you've got additional visuals. Now everything is encapsulated within one card visual, which makes it really neat and also really efficient in terms of the number of visuals you've got on your screen. So let's go back over to the card visual here. And in the, in the previous video, actually, I went through and these are the new slicer buttons. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through each one of these different visuals here and I'm going to upgrade it. This was a dashboard I created a few years ago and the technology has moved on, my knowledge has moved on, so we're eventually going to go and upgrade each of the different elements and it feels like a good time to go and look at these ones here. So let's start off by moving these off to one side for just now and I'm going to go and add in the new card visual. Okay, so it is here. Now, it is a preview feature at the moment, so you do need to actually go and um, activate it. But once you've got it activated, you'll see this is available here. And we're going to go and let's look at adding some measures in here. So we've got a load of measures in here. And the ones I want to start off with are going to be the bat log count and the bat log hours. So now with a new card visual, you can add in multiple measures. So let's add in the bat log count and the bat log hours. OK, so this gives us something to start with. So everything's looking a little bit um, big just now. Um, particularly for this space. So we're going to go and actually just change some of the detail there. So let's start off with the callout values. And um, we're going to make them a lot smaller. So let's start off with 22. And also I don't want the auto for the, in fact, actually I'm just going to make it none because I want to see the exact figures here. And then I'm going to center those. And I'm going to go and change the actual color to this one here. In fact, I'm going to change it to be the same color as these here. which is this color here, 80, 80, 80. Okay, so that's fine. That's the same color as that. And I want to get rid of these borders here. So let's go to cards and let's go to borders and we'll switch that off. Okay, so now I want to just change this um, these titles here. So we're going to go to callout values and then we want to go down to labels. And we can see we can switch these labels on and off here. I'm just going to open it up. And we can see that we can't actually change anything here. So what we have to do is go back up here and select each of the individual ones. So we'll start off with count. And then if we scroll down again and we go to labels and we can see it's got auto in there, but we can over type that. OK, so I'll call that one backlog. And we'll call this one hours. OK, so backlog in hours. So next we're going to add in the reference labels. So we're going to minimize these. And we can see we've got this option here for reference labels. So we'll open that up. And underneath each one of these, we've got the option to either look at all. And then we've got the two measures that we added into this card. So if we start off with all, we can see that's grayed off. So, so if you can't see the ability to, to add a label here, you know this has been selected as all. So each reference label is related to the measures that you've got on your card. So I've selected battle count there. And then we're going to go to data. And in here, we're going to go and construct what's going to be shown in the reference label. Now, if I just go back and minimize it. OK, so I'm going to open this up. And we're going to go and the reference label is going to be the backlog count threshold. OK, so I'm just going to pull that into there. Now, a few things have happened here. You can see that we've got options here that have um, given us a, a divider line and they've also added a background color into there now that we've added this reference label in. But I'm also going to go and change this one here to hours and we're going to change the backlog hours threshold into here okay so that's balanced out a little bit so now we've got the backlog threshold here and here so let's go and tidy up this this section here that has got the that contains the reference labels 
Okay, so there's a bit of a hierarchy here. So you can have multiple reference labels in here, you can see. And if you've got multiple reference labels, then you will be able to choose which one you want to configure. But I'm just going to stick with one for just now. So we've got the one reference label here. Now for each reference label, we've got a title, we've got a value, we've got detail, we've got the divider, and we've got the background. Now each one of these can be configured differently. Now the exception is this divider. Now you'll see you can't actually select it just now. So what you have to do is go back to all. And then if we scroll down here, we'll see that this divider is now available to be enabled or disabled, but you can only do it for all of them. So this divider can be switched on or off, but it has to be switched on and off for the whole visual. And that means each of the cards within it. You can't do it for individual cards and have a divider for this one and not for this one. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so let's go back to the battle account. And this doesn't look particularly great just now, so we're going to go and make some changes to it. So let's start off with the title. Now I'm going to go and open up this title here. And we've got the option to use the field name or we can use a custom title. So I'm going to change that to a custom title. And I'm going to go and just change that to be T and then colon there. Now, the reason we've done that is because we want just an indicator to say this is a threshold. Now, it might be interpreted as a target. It doesn't really make much difference, but it's just a, a little bit more subtle than what we had before. So I'm going to do that for the first one. And the title is going to be a little bit smaller. So let's make it 10. And I'm going to also change the color to be the same color as the other ones. 80, 80, 80. Okay, so we can see here it's actually been changed to be slightly smaller than this element here, which is the actual value of the reference label. So let's go and we'll change that as well. So we'll change the color first of all, and then we're going to make it slightly smaller. Okay, so that's a little bit better. We'll leave that as it is for just now. And then in the detail, we've got the option to add an additional measure that provides an additional level of detail, as it might suggest here. So in this detail here, I'm going to go and show the difference between the actual value here and the threshold here. Okay, so in this example here, the backlog is 745, the threshold is 800. So we want to be able to see that the difference there is going to be 55. Okay, so I've created this measure here, and it's a really straightforward measure. We're just looking at the difference between the backlog count and the backlog count threshold. And then we're going to derive an, an arrow symbol to see if it's above or below the threshold or equal to the, the threshold. And then we're returning our text here. Now, one of the things to bear in mind is I've actually also added in this unichar. So these are the space at either side of the, the difference and the arrow symbol. Now, if you if you put a space in just using open quotes and a, a space and close quotes, then what happens is it gets stripped out. So you've got to use these characters here to actually force it to to add a space and I'll show you why that why I've done that in a second. Okay, so I'm going to add that in there and we can see that we've got this value here. So let's go and change the color of that as well and the size. Okay, so now we've got the, the threshold, we've got the value and we've got the difference from the value up here. So the other thing I want to do is I want to be able to make that centered. Okay, so the layout here is grayed out and the spacing is grayed out. So that tells us that that's something that's not available when we select an individual measure. So let's go up here and we'll select all. And now we can see the layout and the space are now available. Okay, so let's go into the layout. And we have got this option here, this arrangement option, whether it can be rows or columns. And we'll come back to that later. And also if it's in a style of, if it's tabulated or if it's in a sentence. So a sentence is going to be the default here. But if we go for the tabular example here, what it's going to do is it's going to put the value of the, the title at one side and then it's going to add the reference label and the detail at the other side. So I don't want that for this example here. So let's go back to sentence. But what I do want is for it to be in the middle. And we'll also do this horizontal here. Okay, so it's a little bit more centered underneath this value at the top here. Okay, so now I want to actually add a little bit of conditional formatting to this. So to do that, what I'm going to do is go back to the battle count here under the reference label section. And um, we're going to go to the detail. And we can see here we've got a font and we've got a color. Now that color there, if I just go and change it, refers to the background color here. Now we can see now why you've added that extra spaces at either side of here. It just gives it a little bit of breathing space. So let me just take them away and you'll, you'll see the difference immediately. 
Okay, so it's right up to the edge of each one of these and it just looks a little bit too tight. So if we add in some spaces, it just gives us a little bit of breathing space around about the, the border around the delta value. And then we're going to go and update this font and color using conditional formatting. Okay, so as a measure here, it's a really, really straightforward measure. The threshold is 7, 750. That's actually different to the one I put here, but I'll go and update that to 800 now. And then we've got the value that's measured and this is going to be backlog count. And then we've got the measured value is greater than the threshold, then we're going to return this red color here. Otherwise, it's going to be this gray color here. Okay, so let's go and just add that in. And then we're going to go back in and we're going to go and add some conditional format in here. So we'll go to field value and we're going to add the backlog count threshold conditional format. In. And we're going to go, to go and do the same for the color here. Okay, so we've got a bit of an issue here because that conditional formatting now is the same as the font. So what we're then going to go and do is this transparency here refers to this color here, the background color. So let's make it 80 or 90 percent transparent. We'll have a look and see how it looks. Okay, so I like that idea of just putting a little bit of a border around it by making that transparency um, I'm making it the same color, but 90% transparent. And then I'm going to go and just change the threshold value so we can see the color kicking in here to be red if it's actually above the threshold. So I'm going to go and change this and I'll just change it to 700. Okay, so we can see that that conditional format is working. Now, obviously, the conditional format is based on 700 and the value we've got here for the, the delta is 800. So the, that isn't the correct figure there, but we can see that conditional format is okay. I don't really like the red. I think it's too red if there's such a thing. So I'm going to go and actually choose a different colour of red for this. Okay, let's give this one a go. Okay, so it's a bit subtler. I like that. Right, so I'm going to go and do the same for the backlog hours. Okay, now that one legitimately is actually conditionally formatted because the threshold is 21,000 and it's actually above it. It's 763 above it and we can see that others pointing up. So let's just go and modify this one here. We'll change that back to 800. And that'll sort it out. Okay, great. Now we're going to go and change this title here to be a little bit smaller. Let's make it 14. And we'll just tuck it off to the side here for just now. Because I want to have a little bit extra space with this card here. I'm going to pull that up and then we're going to go and squeeze this up a little bit here. Now you can see here that what's happened is it, it's, it's kind of squeeze this up a little bit here and this one here is not centered in, in here. So we need to go and actually format this. So the first thing we'll need to do is go into the reference labels here. Okay, now we're going to go to spacing. And we've got this option here, customize the outer spacing. So we're going to go and open it up. And we can see here we've got padding before and padding after the divider line. So let's make these a little bit smaller. And we'll play with these. So you can see that the padding before is, is basically Above here is the before value and below here is the after value. So let's make this four. And we'll make, we'll leave that one as it is just now and we're gonna make them slightly smaller. So we're gonna to go to the call out values up here. Go to, in fact, select all. Go to values and we'll make that 22. And we'll make it bold. So this is really just finessing the actual layout here. Okay, so that's a little bit better, but I still want a little bit of extra space between the callout value here and this line here. So let's go back again to our reference labels, layout, spacing, and we're gonna get that slightly bigger. Okay, so I think that's a lot better. Now the next thing we're going to do is make that slightly bigger as well and that's going to just give us a little bit of extra space there. Right, so it's starting to come together now. I don't really like this divider line. I think it's a little bit too too bright and this is a bit too grey. So we're going to we're going to move lighten these a, a bit. So let's go back into reference labels. Let's go to divider and let's go and choose a different color here. Okay, that's a lot better. And then let's go into the background. And there's a couple of things we can do. We can choose just a lighter color. But the other thing that I like to do is just change this transparency here. There we go. Okay. 
Okay, something like that. Now, the proportions are still a little bit not right for me. I want this to be a, a little bit smaller than this bit here. This is the main number here. This is additional information. Okay, I think there's another couple of tweaks we can do here. So I'm going to go back into the layout and I'm going to go into this vertical alignment here. And that's going to make it neat up to the top here. But then we're going to go into the spacing and I'm going to go and just make that a little bit bigger here. Okay, great. That's going to make it a little bit better in terms of proportions there between the, the section here. And I'm just going to actually make these divider cards a little bit lighter here. Okay, that's a bit better. Okay, so you can tweak, we could probably tweak this all day. But the idea here is now you've got not only the card value itself, but you've also got the little bit of extra detail underneath that allows you to see the threshold see the difference from the threshold, add a bit of conditional format and then a little bit of an addo that says if you're above or below it. So hopefully you've got some ideas about how you can use this new functionality that's available in the card visual in your own dashboards. And if you do and you find this video useful, it's always much appreciated if you could give it a thumbs up and a like and add any comments below. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.